What the fuck is up? Welcome back. My name is Noah Hills. You can find me on Twitter at Noah More Parties, and you can find my written work and my rankings for Devi Leagues, Dynasty Leagues, and Rookie Drafts for running backs at NoahMoreParties.com. And today's video is a, uh, I have five key takeaways from the Combine. You're probably, probably seeing a lot of Combine content lately, but all of that other Combine content is bad. Mine is good. Therefore, you should continue watching the video. Let's get into it. Number one, key takeaway from the combine. Uh, this is all running back stuff. I don't give a shit about anything else but a running back. So don't don't come to me with Quentin Johnston and Anthony Richardson. This is about running backs. Uh, number one, Zach Charbonnet, Bijan Robinson, Devon A. Chain, Jameer Gibbs are who we thought they were. Charbonnet came in a little bit lighter than we anticipated, but he's still six foot two fourteen. That's basically, I mean, a little bit taller, but basically average size for a running back. That's plenty. Uh, Bijan 5'11", 215 plenty. A-Chain and Gibbs both came in right about where they measured in at in college. I think A-Chain came in like half an inch taller, three inches uh, heavier. Gibbs was like five, nine and a half. He was never going to be five eleven. Um, He's like five, nine and a half and 199. So a pound lighter than he was listed in college, but essentially the same, same situation. They were undersized. They're basically the same level of undersized. Uh, Charbonnet, four, five, three in the 40. Decent. We I mean, other than, you know, some speculation that he could be like a 4'6 guy. Like, I don't think anybody thought he was super fast. Uh, Bijan, sub 4'5, A-chain, low 4'3, Gibbs, mid 4'3. We knew all this. Bijan and Charbonnet were both relatively explosive. These guys are who we thought they were. Nobody should be changing their minds about anything, you know, about these guys really at all. Second key takeaway is Evan Hull, a guy who I've talked about, I think I did a whole video about him on this channel, uh, Evan Hull from Northwestern might be for real. I was excited about him a couple weeks ago, or for a while, but like in that video a couple weeks ago, um, good pass catcher, uh, decent rushing efficiency in college, good size. We thought he was going to be athletic, and he was athletic at the Combine. Uh, I tweeted, Evan Hull and Tony Pollard, basically the exact same height and weight, basically the exact same 40, basically the t same 10-yard split, basically the same flying 20, basically the same vert, basically the same broad. Evan Hole and Tony Pollard are like physical clones of each other, and Evan Hole's skill set, based on what he was asked to do in college, the kinds of things he was successful at in college, kind of sounds like Tony Pollard, like he was a, a versatile pass catcher, a really productive pass catcher, and efficient on the ground, uh, but not super consistent on the ground, which kind of suggests, okay, maybe this guy's winning because he's athletic, but he's like not the most natural runner. Tony Pollard is also not the most natural runner, or at least wasn't when he came into the league. He had been playing wide receiver, was a versatile pass catcher, a dynamic and productive pass catcher, an efficient runner, but not super like refined and consistent on a down-to-down -down basis because he just wasn't playing running back all the time. Evan Hull comes into the league with a similar skill set, I think. So I don't, I don't hate that comp. Uh, whether he's Tony Pollard or not, I think you have to care about Evan Hull at this point, one of the most athletic running backs in this class. The third key takeaway is that Tyon Evans of Louisville, formerly of Tennessee, formerly of Hutchinson Community College, uh, you have to care about Tyon Evans in this running back class. I talked about him a little bit on a video, I don't know, a few weeks ago now, how he's in community college. He averaged like three yards per carry more than his teammates did. And then it was the number one Juco transfer in the entire country, went to Tennessee, played in the SEC, was super efficient there, transferred to Louisville to be like closer to his son, and then was super efficient at Louisville. He dominated the junior college level, was super efficient in the SEC, was super efficient in the ACC. We thought he might be kind of athletic, uh, he's definitely big, 5'9 and a half, 225. He's built like Doug Martin. He's built like Damian Pierce. He's built like Zach Moss, like these big, tough runners. All those guys are under 5'10 and 220 plus. And Evans is the fastest among them. I think he ran like 4'52, 4'53. He's got the sixth highest speed score in this entire class. That number is in the 87th percentile. And he's already a good, hard runner. Um, I watched film on him, I think, since I... I talked about him in that video and he's just always falling forward, always fighting for extra yards. Like one of the few most powerful backs in this class when it comes to like powering through contact on film. So he's a hard runner. Apparently he's fast. Uh, he's really big and stoutly built given how short he is and comps, you know, stylistically to some decent running backs from the past. He's not getting a lot of buzz in this class, but even if he turns out to be Zach Moss, coming out of nowhere to do that is pretty damn good. 
so you, you have to care about Tyon Evans. The fourth key takeaway for me from the combine is that Chase Brown is officially interesting. I have not yet watched film on Chase Brown. He's a fifth year guy. No, he was super productive last year. His rushing efficiency profile looks decent. I just haven't had, I haven't done a ton of work on him. And so I wasn't super familiar beyond those kind of broad strokes. And he was 5'11", 205 in college as a fifth year senior, which isn't great. That's like, uh, like relatively tall for a running back and small. That's like Christian McCaffrey, what he was at the combine. And Chase Brown is, I mean, I haven't watched him, but the numbers don't suggest this. And I can't imagine he's quite the receiver that Christian McCaffrey was. So it was very important that he weighed in at 209 and measured in at five, nine and a half. That's a little bit bigger and a little bit shorter. That's more in the range of like normal size for NFL running backs. That's good. Uh, I had another tweet, Chase Brown and Jarek McKinnon, essentially the same height and weight within a half inch, essentially the same 40, essentially the same 10 yard split essentially the same flying 20, essentially the same vert, and like five inch difference on the broad in favor of McKinnon. We know Jarek McKinnon was one of the most athletic running backs in the league in his prime. Chase Brown is the same level of athlete, give or take a couple inches here or there on like some jumping drills. So he's a legit athlete with decent size now. I'm excited to uh, check him out on film. We'll see where that goes, but he's officially interesting in this class. And my last key takeaway from the combine is about a guy who didn't even run. And that's because Zach Evans showed up at five foot 11 and 202 pounds. This guy wasn't listed shorter than six feet, I think throughout his college career. Hasn't been listed below 212 since he was a freshman. Uh, was 212 at TCU as a sophomore. Was listed at six foot 215 last year at Ole Miss. Rolled up to the combine, announced like four days before the combine that he wasn't running because, uh, I believe because of a hamstring injury. Either way, he's, he's planning on running at the Ole Miss Pro Day, which is later this month. But it's weird that he, A, didn't run, but B, showed up light. If, if Zach Evans puts up his high school testing numbers, which in high school, he was a freak athlete, 4-5-1, his uh, short shuttle. Zach Evans had a 3-9-1, which is the fastest time for a high school kid ever as far as like officially you know tracked times 391 the best agility test ever for a high school running back uh and he had like a 37 and a half inch vertical so numbers that would be good at the combine he was doing them in high school so he was a freak athlete back then that doesn't always mean guys test as freak athletes now but if he did exactly the same thing now as he did back then at 511 202 his closest physical comps accounting for uh body type height and weight and all those testing numbers, his closest physical comps in my database would be Ronnie Hillman, Darrington Evans, Bilal Powell, Ronald Jones, Bernard Scott, Tevin Coleman, Christian McCaffrey, Kenny Irons, Justin Jackson, and Elijah Mitchell. Curiously enough, Elijah Mitchell himself went from 218, his final season on the uh, University of Louisiana roster was like two, like between 220 and 215 throughout his college career on that roster, and then measured in the combine at 201. So very, very uh, interesting parallel there between Zach Evans and Elijah Mitchell. And Elijah Mitchell's a guy who I comped uh, to Zach Evans, I don't know, like months ago, a month ago on Twitter. I think they're somewhat similar. So this is more similarity between Evans and Mitchell. I kind of, more than, I'm, I'm having a hard time even deciding what to say because like, it's weird that he was so light after being so heavy, or not so heavy, but like much heavier on the roster. But like, I, it's weird to determine why. Like, I I think there's like three options. Number one, he played at 215 at Ole Miss, and then he was trying to cut weight so he could run fast at the combine and then got hurt shortly before. That's one possibility. Maybe he was training since his season ended to run really fast at the combine, was cutting weight, uh, got down to like 200, 202, whatever, like a week ago, pulled a hammy and was like, shit, I can't run anymore. But then sh didn't want to like not show up to the combine. So he shows up and weighs light. That's one possibility. Second possibility is that he plays at like 200 pounds, 202, 205 whatever it is, and they've just been pumping his weights on these rosters for a couple years now. That seems unlikely to me, number one, because he's been at two different schools. It's less likely that two different schools are pumping weights. Not that it's crazy to, to think that schools are pumping weights. I think, I think they do, but not all do, and it's less likely that two do than that one does. So the fact that he's at two different schools and was listed above 210 at both of them is, I think, good evidence to the possibility that he plays at 210, or 215. Also evidence of that is that at TCU, he wasn't listed at 
210. He wasn't listed at 215. He wasn't listed at 205. He wasn't listed at 220. He wasn't listed at, he wasn't listed at one of these like nice five pound increments. He was listed at 212. What would possess whoever, you know, puts together those rosters to write down 212 if Zach Evans didn't actually weigh 212? Like that's not a round number that you, I mean, it's a round number, but it's not like it's, it's not a multiple of five, which is like I, where I feel like somebody would round to if they were just bullshitting or pumping up numbers. So the 212 and the fact that he weighed heavier at both TCU and Ole Miss kind of indicate to me that he probably doesn't actually play at like 202. But the other possibility is that he, I don't know, plays heavier, knew he wasn't going to run at the combine beforehand use the injury as an excuse, which I, I wouldn't blame him. Like if, you, if you're not ready to run, don't run. You got to come up with something like, just don't, just don't do it. But then he didn't like, then he was still trying to cut weight, anticipating running at his pro day. That one seems less likely to me. So I think, I think I've just talked myself into the most likely outcome here is that he was cutting weight since the season. Maybe he actually played at like 210. Maybe he was like 208 later in the season. I don't know. But I can't imagine he plays around 200 pounds. Having said that, one of the reasons why I don't think he plays at like 200 pounds is he's one of the most powerful running backs in this class. I mean, just watch the man play. Based on my film charting, he's one of the best running backs at powering through contact from defensive backs, from linebackers. Um, He's average against defensive linemen. He's just constantly falling forward, breaking a lot of tackles. That's another piece of evidence to like, okay, maybe he doesn't play at 202. Otherwise, how could he be more powerful than everybody in this class? other than like Zach Charbonnet, Kendra Miller, Tyon Evans, like other running backs who weigh 215 plus. He could just be a freak who runs, uh, you know, really powerfully at 202. I just don't think that's probably the case. But pending his pro day, 202 is the number we have for now, but pending his pro day, he's now an undersized running back without reliable receiving skills, which is not a good archetype. Generally, you want to be big or at least big enough, or you want to be capable of contributing in the passing game. Ideally, you have both, but not everybody has both. So you need one or the other. Zach Evans now has neither of those. I spoke in my last video about how I think he's got some developmental potential in the receiving game, but we can't count that as a box checked until we see it from him, until we see that development. And we can't count on him being 215 pounds or you know, even 210 pounds until we see it somewhere. So right now he's a small running back without reliable receiving chops, not a good archetype. And the guys in that above list, the kind of physical comps list who kind of match that are Ronnie Hillman, Bilal Powell, Elijah Mitchell, all NFL contributors. Nothing wrong with being a Ronnie Hillman in the NFL. Nothing wrong with being Bilal Powell. Nothing wrong with being Elijah Mitchell. Hillman and Powell specifically were not the same kind of power runners that Zach Evans is. Like they fit the archetype as like smallish and not great receivers in college, but they, they're they not stylistically similar to Evans as runners. I think Mitchell has a little bit more of that to his game, but that's kind of, those are kind of the paths to, to success for a guy at 202 without reliable receiving chops. So Zach Evans would no longer be my RB2. I can tell you that much, but those are my five key takeaways. Guys at the top, other than Evans, are who we thought they were. Evan Hull might be for real. Tyon Evans is a guy you got to care about. Chase Brown is officially interesting, and Zach Evans, what are you doing, man? But yeah, that's all I got. Thanks for watching. Hit like, subscribe. Have a great week. See you next time. Peace.